Japan has begun a two week trial run of its planned release of Fukushima nuclear wastewater, signaling that the contentious discharge is imminent. While the plan faces vehement opposition from local fishermen, neighboring countries, South Korea's fisheries ministry is struggling to keep the public away from unscientific information that could stoke excessive fear. So, are fears really blown out of proportion or is it warranted? Would the release have an irreversible, far reaching impact on humans, marine life, and the environment that we can't necessarily gauge at this point? So, in the next two episodes of our special interview, our Zoom in segment, we'll hear from experts with contrasting views on the pressing issue. Today's is part one of the two part series. We would like to first hear from a nuclear scientist who claims that the discharge is not a major point. Of concern. So this morning we're joined by Dr. Tony Irwin, Honorary Associate Professor in Nuclear Physics at Australian National University. Good morning, Dr. Irwin. Good morning, South Korea. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. So it's a contentious topic. We've been talking about it all month of June, in fact, months leading up to the planned discharge. Experts around the world remain largely divided on the safety of Japan's planned discharge, but you have concluded, along with a fair share of experts from Australia, that the release will be reasonable and safe. So first and foremost, on why and sat- what scientific grounds did you draw that the conclusion that the release of the treated wastewater would be safe? So there's there's an understandable perception that all radioactive materials are always and everywhere dangerous, particularly radioactive waste and particularly liquid waste. But not all radioactive materials are dangerous. So the Fukushima water discharge is not a unique event or event without precedent, as, as some claim. Nuclear power plants worldwide have routinely discharged water containing tritium for over 60 years without harm to to people or the environment, and at most of them at far higher levels than is planned for Fukushima. So that the quantity discharged depends on the the type of reactor. Hmm. So the Fukushima reactors, they're boiling water reactors. They produce relatively small amounts of tritium during normal operation. So when operating, the limit was 22 terabecrals a year, and the Japanese government has decided to adopt the same limit for the planned discharges, although it could be far higher without causing any harm. Hmm. So for comparison, in South Korea, the Kori nuclear power plant, that's a pressurized water reactor. They produce more tritium. So the Kori plant discharged 49 terabecrals of liquid tritium in 2021, more than twice the planned Fukushima amount, and 91 terabecrals in 2019, more than four times the planned Fukushima discharge, all without harm to people or the environment. Heavy water reactors produce even more. Pickering Canada, the Kandu reactor, discharges over 400 terabecrals a year. Mm. I operated uh, in the UK the advanced gas cooled reactors, which produce again more tritium. I regularly discharged over 300 terabecrals a year. And then, (laughs) if you want to be really big levels, uh, you have the plants which reprocess nuclear fuel. So La Hague plant in France discharged 11,400 terabecrals in 2018 into the English Channel. So that's more than 12 times the total tritium contents of all the tanks on site at Fukushima, which is about 890 terabecrals, every year without harm to people in the environment. So provided the levels of all the dangerous radioisotopes are below regulatory levels, the planned discharge at Fukushima is very conservative. Ah, compared to other examples that we don't necessarily cover on the mass media on a daily basis. Uh, Thank you for uh, uh, making those uh, fair comparisons for us. Uh, I am still sitting on that that first comment you said, not all radioactive material is dangerous. I think just hearing that hit my ears, it just sounds wrong. And I think that's a conception that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, In in managing fear, I think properly explaining and a scientific approach is absolutely necessary. So could you maybe explain to our listeners what exactly is tritium and why do you believe it's safe to discharge over one million tons of tritium uh, 
contaminated water. Besides the point that you just mentioned, that relative to other releases, it's pretty conservative. So tritium is just hydrogen with a couple of extra neutrons in the nucleus. So like hydrogen, it combines with oxygen to produce water. But in this case, it's tritiated water. And because ordinary water and tritiated water are chemically the same, it's difficult to separate them. So tritium has the, the weakest radioactivity of any radionuclide. It's, it's a very low level beta admission, low energy, um, and it decays to non-radioactive helium. It's got a short half-life of 12 years. In a human, it's got a biological half-life of about 10 days, so it passes through your, your mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. um, and in fish, it's only two days. Mm -hmm. So it, tritium becomes more dilute as it moves up the food chain. It doesn't concentrate in, in fish. So tritium is quite natural. It's continuously created in the Earth's upper atmosphere and falls as rain. So more tritium is created in the upper atmosphere than is produced by nuclear uh, reactors. Mm. So, for instance, in Japan, 220 terabecrols per year of tritium, that's 10 times the planned discharge, falls as rain on Japan every year. And, you know, your, your body naturally contains tens of becquerels of tritium. So the, the limits for tritium in water are expressed in, in Becquerel's per litre. So the World yeah. Health Organization limit for tritium in drinking water is 10,000 Becquerel's a litre. The Fukushima discharge limit is 1,500 Becquerel's per limit. So it's, it's one seventh of even the drinking water standard. Mm. So it is very, very conservative. Mm. <laughs> Because I think it's about public trust, I, I, I really want to get to this question, Dr. Irwin. The ALPS system is something that we've talked about several times on the program without much clarity, but I'm hoping that you could help in that department. The water is being treated and purified by a tech called ALPS, the Advanced Liquid Processing System. It's believed to remove the vast majority of elements that we might consider to be problematic or potentially dangerous to the human body. How credible is this facility based on your understanding? And how can you prove that it will actually eliminate most of the dangerous radioactive materials, if not all? Yeah, um, th this, this really is the key question. So Japan requested the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, to independently assess their, their plans, arrangements, and, and the plan for the water discharge to ensure the operation will be carried out in a safe and transparent manner in line with international safety standards. So the, the agency established a task force consisting of their staff, uh, together with 11 internationally recognized experts from different countries, including one from, from South Korea. So starting in February 2022, the agency has carried out a series of missions and examine TEPCO's operations and the regulatory process at the Japanese Nuclear Regular Authority, the, the NRA. So the latest report issued May 2023 reviews the determination of, of radionuclides in the Alps treated water. So samples were taken from the first batch of Alps treated water expected to be discharged into the sea. And the samples were independently analyzed by TEPCO, by the IAEA at its labs in Monaco, Siebersdorf and Vienna, and then also in third party labs in France, South Korea, Switzerland and the USA. So the South Korean lab is the Korea Institute of Nuclear Safety, KIN's lab. So there was independent analysis, both by TEPCO and three IAEA labs and then the third party labs as well. And the results show a very high level of agreement between all the labs and confirm TEPCO's analytical performance through a, a very transparent and rigorous process. And importantly, neither the, the agency nor the participating third party labs 
detect any uh, additional radionuclides, i.e. that is radionuclides beyond what is included in the source term at any significant levels. Mm. So I think that this is this is really confirmed independently that the ALP system is working as, as designed. And also in this sort of area, the, the agency has been independently collecting marine samples since 2014. Again, a lot of independent analysis. Mm. Nonetheless, doubt, fear uh, remains for the larger public, it seems, and perhaps mass media doesn't help in in creating that sort of narrative, which is why we thought this interview was so important. Uh, The Pacific Islands Forums Panel of Experts, namely, uh, conducted their independent study, too. They said that they cannot yet verify if the discharge would be safe. Now, that seems like suddenly a red flag. The team said TEPCO's sample extraction has been inadequate incomplete and inconsistent. They specifically said that the sample fell short of representing the entire water tank. So lack of viable data for all radionuclides in the treated wastewater. What is your take on that review? Well, this is where the latest agency report, which is, they're all available on their website. Um, So this confirms that circulation and agitation was applied for several days to these tanks to ensure the homogeneity of the ALPS treated water prior to collecting the representative samples. So this has really demonstrated that that the samples are are really correct for the the tanks. And interestingly, last month, uh, May 2023, a team of 21 experts from South Korea visited the, the Fukushima site and they inspected the facilities and equipment to be used in the discharge process. So this team comprised experts from the uh, KINS, the Korean Institute of Nuclear Safety, and the Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology. And they're going to produce their own independent report. So that that will also be interesting to to see another independent uh, Mm. assessment. Mm. Uh, Dr. Irwin, you work in Australia, you live there, and I wonder if you can help us understand what is the general consensus among experts in Australia on this matter, and how is the public responding to the imminent release of treated uh, wastewater? So many of us in Australia have looked at the science and concluded that the planned discharge is, is very conservative and certainly well below any international standards. I think what is really reassuring is is the comprehensive IAEA test force investigations and reports into all aspects of of, of this. Mm. Um, In Australia, in addition to, uh, there was an article in the conversation, the Australian Science Media Centre has also reported comments on this issue. So it, it certainly has been discussed in, in, in Australia. Mm. Many experts here in Korea who are strongly against the idea question that if the water is in fact safe, why not use it for constructive processes within Japan, for, such as industrial use or agricultural use instead of slowly, but nonetheless dumping it into the ocean water? What are your thoughts on this? So for for the management of radioactive waste, the the safety of workers, the public and the environment is the priority and it's it's optimizing that protection. So countries have looked at all the alternatives for for 60 years and control discharge within regulatory limits is the least risk international practice. The, The Japanese government did investigate all the options when they were looking at their their policy and decided on dilute and discharge in accordance with international practice is is the lowest risk. Mm. Dr. Irwin, before we let you go, uh, as we alluded to, fear among South Korean public is growing, which was reflected in a recent spike in people trying to hoard sea salt in their shelves. If there is a message you'd like to send out to those who fear the release of radioactive material into the ocean with treated wastewater, uh, what would you say? So it's completely understandable that 
when it's announced that radioactive water will be discharged into the sea, <laughs> it sounds like a bad idea. But as I've explained, the water contains only harmless tritium. We've got 60 years experience of all nuclear power plants, including those in South Korea, routinely discharging tritium in far greater quantities than planned for Fukushima. My concern is that the unfounded fears will damage the livelihood of the, the Fukushima fishing community, who are still recovering from the reputational damage from the 2011 accident. Mm. And I think the media has got an important role here in, in presenting the, the science. Uh, it is very important there's independent verification of the discharges. So the agency will continue to provide advice to Japan and all the neighboring countries and provide the independent monitoring and verification. So it must be a transparent process. But the planned discharge is ultra conservative and certainly will not cause any harm to, to people or, or the environment. Dr. Thank Aaron, you. thank you very much for joining us. So we appreciate the insights. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.